What's up everybody? So we're here to talk about some Nintendo Switch shoot 'em up games, shmup games, whatever you would like to call them. And I think I'm going to do a few of these because I have quite a few shooters and I don't want to try to jam them all into one video. I don't know if I'm going to show any video. I guess we'll see in editing, but I'm at least going to talk about some of the Switch shooters. But before we talk about the actual shooters, I just want to talk about like the Nintendo Switch and why it's a great form factor for shoot 'em up games. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a peripheral. Actually, I'm going to talk about two peripherals, but just I'm going to take, for example, Crimson Clover here. And so playing the game, you're playing a, a vertical scrolling shooter and you're not making <laughs> really great use of the screen here. Like it's a, it's a very small uh, subsect of the screen that we're using, but there's this peripheral that you can get for the Switch and it's super cheap called a flip grip that allows you to take advantage of something that a lot of shooters have in them, like naturally, called Tate mode. So we could go, like, it's not supported in all games, but some games uh, support this thing called Tate mode, where we could go in here and we could rotate the actual game, giving us a lot more screen space to work with, and you make the game a little bit easier to see. So then, with the flip grip, all you would need to do is remove the Joy-Cons, and then slide. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Oh boy. I accidentally muted the game. <laughs> but then you could just like slide the switch into the flip grip. Then you slide the Joy Cons into here. There we go. <laughs> so then we could go back to the game. And now we're playing with a much larger screen space. And like the game looks awesome. We're playing it kind of in the way that it was meant to be played. And like I said, it just looks phenomenal. And it's so freaking cool. But then the second thing I was going to talk about is the Switch itself. Uh, the Joy-Cons you can see here, do not they're not like a proper D-pad. And so when you're playing shooters, uh, you don't really get a lot of good precision because of this. And so the other thing that I would suggest if you're going to play shooters on the Switch is to either use like a pro controller. Uh, so like pro controller here, you can obviously see it has a proper D-pad. However, you're gonna kind of lose the ability to play the game portably. So instead of the pro controller, I would actually suggest finding the middle ground between Joy-Cons and the pro controller and getting these Hori uh, like sp split pad pros. And I got these on Amazon. These things routinely go on sale. I got them for like 20 bucks and they come in like different colors, different styles. Uh, there's a lot of different options, but these have a proper D-pad on them, and then they have just kind of like nicer uh, shoulder buttons on them. But yeah, so if you're going to play shooters on the Switch, I would definitely suggest, if you want to kind of maximize your experience, to maybe seek out some of these additional things. But anyways, on to the actual games themselves. So the first game I'm going to talk about is... A game called Siberia Delta. So Siberia Delta is a pretty cool game. This game probably one of the cheaper games on the Switch to get physically for whatever reason. But this game is a bullet hell shooter <laughs> through and through. Kind of unremarkable, I would say. <laughs> I'd say like the the thing that kind of sets this game apart from the others is <laughs> there's this thing called the buzz system in it, and it kind of rewards you <laughs> by playing reckless like the more reckless you play like the closer you get the bullets like the longer you let bullets stay on screen and you get closer to them the higher your point multiplier is going to be so if you're the kind of player who loves to play shooters for points then uh this game kind of rewards you <laughs> for kind of going going nuts with uh kind of dodging the bullets that will be on the screen uh the way that you level up your shots in this game is by leveling up period like you it's kind of like an rpg mechanic you level up your ship and then you level up your ship by dodging bullets like i was talking about with the buzz system <laughs> and so uh the more you level up the faster you start moving and then the harder it is to do that spin mechanic and then like actually stay in a straight line and not like crash into bullets and stuff so it's definitely a game that's going to be hard to master probably pretty easy to just get by but hard to master but a fun game, like I said, one of the, the cheaper shooters on the Switch for whatever reason. 
Okay, the next game up is going to be Caladrius Blaze. This game has released on, uh, I know, the PS3 for sure, and I believe the PS4. This game, eh, it's not one of my favorite shooters, that's for sure. This game, uh, it pretty much plays, it's a vertical scrolling shooter. It pretty much plays like every vertical scrolling shooter you've ever played before. I think what sets this game apart is that you it's kind of has like MMO style attacks <laughs> like you end up having these three different elemental shots that you can use and then every time you use them there's kind of like this cooldown bar that happens and like you can deplete your shots like on the elemental shots and if you use all of your elemental shots you have to wait for the cool bar or the cooldown to like finish before you can use that shot again but if you have like certain combos of percentages of the shots left you can do these like kind of insane attacks and then that'll deplete your bars and like i said you have to wait for the cooldown to happen before you can use them again but the game it's kind of all right uh i don't know if there was an actual like north american release of this game this is obviously like an import copy of the game uh but like all the import games that i'm going to show you can very easily play uh with in english like the ui tends to be in english okay the next game up it's going to be Raiden 4 Mikado Remix. This game is a re-release of Raiden 4. Uh, and then Raiden 4 also happens to be my favorite Raiden game in, in the Raiden series. This game supports Tate mode, so you could use this one with the flip grip and have like a really cool experience playing uh, Raiden 4. This one also comes with the original port of Raiden 4 and then the Mikado Remix. And then the Re Mikado Remix basically just gives you a lot of sound options to play. And it's like if you've played one writing game, you've pretty much played them all. I think all writing games are pretty good, except for maybe writing three. <laughs> like writing three on the PS2 is kind of all right. Visually, it's just not the best looking game. Gameplay wise, it plays like a writing game. Uh, and then prior to that, all the writing games were sprite based. And then after that, they've been 3D based, but like the 3D models just got way better looking. <laughs> but yeah, writing four, really cool game. I also have Raiden 5 on the Switch, and at one point, this game was dirt cheap, and then I guess they haven't manufactured new copies of this game or something? I don't know why, but this game has definitely risen in price, and I will say that if you really want to play Raiden 5, I would highly suggest either buying it digitally or just getting it on like the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, where you can get it for like 20 bucks. Like, I don't know why... <laughs> the Switch version of this game has gotten to be as expensive as it is, but it's kind of an expensive Switch game these days. But anyways, Raiden 5, uh, this is the director's cut. They changed something about this game from the original release that I played on the Xbox One like five years ago or something like that. And I've never been able to put my finger on it, but like I still play the Xbox One version of this game, like the OG release over the director's cut. But the director's cut is an interesting game to play if you've never played it like Raiden 5 before and like one thing I will say about Raiden 5 well two things actually it does not support Tate mode <laughs> and it uses like the the it's still a vertical scrolling shooter and then it uses the left and right empty screen space that would otherwise exist to show its UI on the right side of the screen the story is just constantly unfolding so you'll hear people talking but it's so muffled <laughs> by like all the gunshots and the explosions happening on the screen that you can never really make out what they're saying. But the thing about it is that it's never ending and it's constant. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, this would be cool if you had just cutscenes for this or if the audio was actually intelligible, but like you just have no idea what, what they're saying. And it's just, it never stops. Okay, so the next game up, it's going to actually be three games. This is the Shmup Collection. So on my channel here, I have a video called my top 10 favorite doujin shooters. And one of the shooters <laughs> that's in that list is on this, uh, but they're made by the same circle. So if you don't know what doujin games are, doujin games are like Japanese indie games. And they're made by circles, which are just like a circle of indie developers. <laughs> and... They used to be super popular. I don't know how popular doujin games, like physical doujin games are anymore. Uh, now that digital distribution is a thing. 
there's this thing in Japan that happens every year called Kamaket. It's like Comic Convention. And the Dojin games used to be sold at Kamaket. And they were sold in kind of like small numbers. And they just kind of became cult hits by the people who frequented Kamaket. And so if you didn't know that <laughs> this this convention happened, or if you didn't know what Dojin games are, you probably would never even know what these games are. Um, but yeah, so this is a selection of three games from a specific circle called Astroport. And so there's one game called Cetasius, another game called Arm 7, and then another one called Wolf Flame. And I have the Dojin releases of these games. <laughs> like I said, at one point, um, I talked about my Dojin shooter collection. I have like 80 some odd Dojin shooters, and they're all like PC games, but they came in like actual releases. So here's Cetasius's. A Dojin release. Like I said, these were kind of indie shooting games. These games are actually fairly old. Like these are probably somewhere between uh, like six to ten years old each. <laughs> so you have Cetasius, you have Arm 7, and then you have Wolf Flame. And they're really cool. I don't, like I said, I don't know if physical Dojin games are really much of a thing these days. A lot of the online stores that I used to go to didn't exist four or five years ago when I was talking about Dojin games on my channel anymore. And so I have to kind of assume that they, they probably still don't exist in 2021. But anyways, onto the games. Cetasius is uh, kind of like if Gradius and... Darius had a love child, it would be Cetasius. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good looking horizontal, i.e. side-scrolling shooter, and it kind of has the mechanics of both Darius and Gradius. Like, visually and gameplay-wise, it looks more so like Gradius, but like the way, I guess, that weapons and stuff work is more like Darius. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's a very good looking game. Arm 7 is another side-scrolling shooter. It looks like you're piloting a mech and like I said, it's side-scrolling and you're doing stuff <laughs> that you would be doing in a side-scrolling shooter. There's not really much to say about it. <laughs> and then I think Wolf Flame is probably the best game on this collection. Wolf Flame is like a very good looking mix of Raiden and this other game called like Gekaiyo Shooting King that was released on PlayStation 1. There's a Sega Saturn version of the game too, I can't remember its name. But yeah, I think Wolf Flame is probably the best game on this collection and it's the one that I had in my uh, top 10 favorite doujin shooter video. Uh, but I should also mention that Cetasius 7 and, and, oh my god, Arm 7 and Cetasius have two versions of each game on this cartridge. So you have the original release and then kind of like a director's cut release for both of those games. And then Wolf Flame is just like, it's just the original release of Wolf Flame. Okay. And then next we have ESP Rodisai. This is probably one of the best shooters that you can get on the Switch, like both digitally and physically. Uh, this was ported by M2 Shot Trigger's team. So it's a very good port of an existing game. And you have like the arcade release. And then there's like an arcade, um, I guess like director's cut version of this game as well. It's a vertical scrolling uh, bullet hell game. And like I said, it's just a very cool looking game. It's a very fun playing game. And it kind of reminds me of like Castle Shikigami <laughs> in that you're using actual people, like you're moving around actual people around the screen instead of moving around like a, sh uh, a ship or a mech or something like that. And each of the characters that you play in use psychic powers to attack other things on the screen. And it's a very tight, very fun game. And I don't think you can go wrong playing it. This is another one where I'm pretty positive it has not received a North American or like PAL release. But you can import the game from Play Asia, and it's not going to break the bank. Like they usually have this game in stock and it's a pretty fun game to play. And the last game I'm going to show in this video is going to be another game from M2 Shot Triggers, like another port from M2 Shot Triggers. And that's going to be the Alistair collection. 
And if you are familiar with Alice Day, you might be kind of like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I can play Musha and like Robo Alice Day on this. And unfortunately, Musha and Robo Alice Day are not included in this collection. And this is going to be a collection of like Master System games and Game Gear games. But the games that are on here are still very cool and very worth playing, I think. And so this comes with like two Master System games. And then it has three Game Gear games on it, which are going to be uh, like, it's like GG Alice Day 1 through 3. Uh, the cool thing about this collection is GG Alice Day 3 is actually a brand new Game Gear game. <laughs> like this is a brand new Game Gear game that was developed specifically for this release. But it was developed to also run on a Game Gear. <laughs> and so uh, this is, I think Sega actually gave that game a skew for the Game Gear. And so this is, like I said, is a brand new Game Gear game. So if you're trying to build a collect or complete collection of Game Gear games, you're going to need this. Not that you can actually play it in a Game Gear, but it's an official Game Gear game. <laughs> uh, but these are all going to be vertical scrolling shooters. Uh, if you've ever played an Alice Day game, then you're aware of how difficult these games can be, but also how fun these games can be. And then the thing with the Alice Day collection is that the Alice Day collection also, oh my goodness, this is going to be difficult, also had a big box release. And so this big box release, obviously not going to be uh, released in North America or PAL. So this is a Japanese release. But it came with one of the Game Gear Micros. And so this is like an exclusive Game Gear Micro uh, in that set of Game Gear Micros that exists that has all the uh, Alice Day Collection games on it. And so if you wanted to play Alice Day, <laughs> GG Alice Day 3 on an actual Game Gear, uh, you could play it on this. Just make sure you have a magnifying glass. <laughs> but yeah, so this video went way longer than I thought it would. I'll see what I can do to edit it down <laughs> to like hopefully a manageable uh, chunk of time. But yeah, I feel like we covered a lot of ground for Switch shooters. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll cover some more. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you're having a great weekend. And until the next time, peace.